Hi, I'm Duff McKagan. I'm at Amoeba Records, and this is What's In My Bag. Chip away, chip away. I'm worth drawing. Chip away, I'm There's something new. Chip away, chip away. Can you hear me calling? Can you wait till this is through? I'm here at Amoeba, a place that I really like. I like record stores. I'm really getting back into record stores because my vinyl collection over the years has just gone away. You know, when I was a teenager, I would always sell records and, and buy stuff and trade. When I moved to LA, I sold records to help finance my trip. I sold my drum set and records and stuff. That's what you did. And then CDs came out. Slash and I each got like a CD player and we went to the CD store that was in the Valley. They were rare at that time. And we kind of started at A and went and bought every cool CD. And then my vinyl collection was just like old DOA. I still have my Black Flag, Nervous Breakdown original single. I knew stuff that I wanted to keep forever, but most of it's gone. So I was going through Amoeba and this Pat Travers record was sitting out in the front. I was 11 years old. I had a paper route and I, had a, I did like lawn mowing jobs, took the bus to the record store which was like the cool place. I was finally kind of old enough to go in on my own. Didn't know what I was gonna look for. I'm the last eight kids, so I wanted to find music of my own, right? So a cool guy, sideburns, cool guitar. You got the, the record company dude here, like the man, that's the man. And on the back cover, there's smoke and the guys all, there's just ties all askew and all the pictures are all cattywampus. Only bought it for the cover and the back cover, as you will if you're 11 years old. And it's actually, it's a great record. It stands up to time. Oh shit, I never knew this. Nico McBrain, Iron Maiden, played drums on this. Wow. Yeah, we used to like get a record then look at, you knew where every record was made, who produced it, who engineered it, who played on it, but I wouldn't have put the Nico McCrane because he wasn't in Maiden yet. It's just some guy in Pat Travers band. <laughs> if it's not obvious by my hat, I'm a Prince fan. His first record, For You, I think he was maybe 18 years old when he made this record. He played everything on it. So I discovered Prince through punk rocker dudes up in Seattle. We were like into all kinds of other music and uh, somebody turned me on the Controversy record and I kind of went backwards from there. And uh, at that time, 1980, 81, I was a drummer and I played bass and I played guitar. And it was, he just really filled my imagination with what was possible. This record came out in, I think, 83 or late 82. Uh, at that point in Seattle, a bunch of shit was going on, like hardcore punk rock. It was the suburban kids came in and shaved their heads and like, it was happening all over the country and, and it, was, it kind of ruined punk rock, you know, like white power and all that, like nonsense. Everything punk rock was against, punk rock was like all inclusive originally. A lot of heroin came in Seattle about 82. I was in a great band. We had just signed to for a record for, with Jello Biafra's label, Alternative Tentacles. Like we were we just toured with Black Flag, Dead Kennedys. Things were looking up for this band and uh, heroin hit the band. My roommate, my girlfriend, like pretty much everybody I knew except for me. And this, if they ever say like a record saved your life, I don't know if this literally, I, would, I wouldn't have killed myself, but I went deep into this record and just played it all the time. I had a car, a $300 car. Didn't think it would make it to New York from Seattle, but maybe it could make it to LA. Put in my notice at my job and I moved to LA. And this record really gave me the courage to do that somehow. It's not the hit tracks. I mean, I, like, I think Little Red Corvette is the best three chord song ever written. So there's my Prince 1999 story. Horror. My daughter Grace turned me on to this. She's like, Dad, you gotta watch this video. And I've always liked bands that scare me. Like when uh, my first gig ever was opening for Black Flag 
in 79. I was uh, 15 or 14. And Ron Reyes was the singer. So Decline of the Western Civilization, Black Flag in Seattle. And I would go to gigs and uh, like when the band actually scared me, that's when I felt alive. This is a band that I saw the video and I couldn't, my mind was like, don't try to figure them out. Just, just go along with the ride. Believe it or not, I just met John Doe for the first time ever on New Year's Eve. Billy Joe had this party where everybody jammed. It was the funnest like house party thing ever. And uh, I finally met John Doe. And a guy I've always really respected. I saw X a ton of times back in the day. I don't really read a lot of books about rock history. I read more history, history. But uh, I've got in this new West Coast punk rock phase lately. I went and saw TSOL last night. I saw TSOL in Fear like three weeks ago. Um, I'm kind of fully in again. So this book is about LA punk. And then the font is good size for me to read the book. I usually have to do a Kindle and like blow up the font a little bit. Thank you, John Doe. <laughs> All right, so I just got to make a record with this guy, Shooter Jennings. So the reason I got this record for this discussion is because this is the same band that I made my record with. I'd recorded like three songs with this band. We just started making my record. And then he had to go back out on tour. And they were coming through the Troubadour. And he goes, you want to come see us play? And I took my wife and we went to Troubadour. And it was packed. And they were so good. And I'm like nudging my wife the whole time. I'm like, this is my band that I'm missing. And they were so, so good. This record, he's a, such a great songwriter. It's like, not the, the obvious D-R-U-N-K, like the, the hits, I mean, I love the song. But there's one, is it Rhinestone? No, Fast Horses and Good Hideouts. Fast Horses and Good Hideouts If you know what you won't find out If you find a woman on the song about Fast Horses and Good Hideouts The Man, The Myth, The Legend. Black Ribbons, if you're gonna get into Shooter Jennings, go there too, Black Ribbons. You're welcome. I need to get this record. This is the classic Minor Threat record. If you're a young kid and want to get into old school punk rock, get this record and get the Fear record, which you guys didn't have. God damn it. Get the Clash first record. Get the Vibrators first record. Get this record. Again, this Southern California punk rock band. Guy's wearing a TSOL shirt, Rick Agnew. A classic record where every, I hate children. Uh, amoeba. Uh, amoeba, Amoeba, Amoeba. And then we're gonna cross over from, from like Southern California punk rock. Motorhead made Ace of Spades in 1980 and it really kind of started to blend punk rock and metal. They were the first band to like just do their own thing and they were truth tellers, you know, no better than Motorhead. And they, they influenced this whole new British way. And there was uh, GBH was one of the bands exploited in GBH. It kind of sounded like a mix between like Pistols and Motorhead. See, baby. This record I got when it came out. Oh yeah, Vietnamese blues. I just got back from Vietnam. No, 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 no. Saw a baby in a prom. I was like, what is a prom? It's a pram, baby carriage. But you learn things when you listen to British punk rock when you're like 17 years old. I put out of my I put it in my top five. Put Generation X. The Damned first record, and you gotta put Pistols in their class first record, and I, I put this up there. With Stranglers also, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think that kind of sums it up for the short little trip I did through Amoeba. Thank you so much. You're welcome.